everyone watching should not be listening to enough with the vague generalities let's get specific about what is going to happen in 2024 we have a prophetic voice with us tonight who is a seasoned minister of the word of god and he has a prophetic word concerning this coming year that is very specific about what the lord is going to do his name is mario murillo this is probably one of the most controversial interviews we've done with mario murillo so i want you to begin to pray with your spirit stir yourself up and let us know where you're watching from and before we dive into that urgent prophetic word, I want to ask you this. Are you tired of supporting woke companies? Here's what you need to do right now. Go to EncounterToday.com and check out the coffees we have available there. And with every cup, you're helping support the preaching of the gospel around the world. And these coffees are amazing. We have the Wigglesworth blend. And now, brand new, we have Azusa Street Mornings. You can start off one bag for a gift of any size just to taste it. Or you can go to our store to buy as many as you like. What a tremendous Christmas gift for those who love the Lord. They get a hold of the Wigglesworth brand or Azusa Street Mornings. Come on. How many of you need a morning outpouring? Well, go check that out at EncounterToday.com and check out the special offer section to see what we have available for you there. Now, without further ado, let's dive into this interview with Mario Morello. Mario Morello, happy holidays. It's good to have you back on Encounter Today. Well, I'm going to give you a Thanksgiving greeting and a Christmas greeting, and I'm going to rebuke the devil in Jesus' name today like never before. Come on. Well, we were, my, my side is hurting from our conversation that we were having earlier as, the, as you called out some of the um, meta-prophetic um, that's out there in the world today. I'm going to start using that meta prophetic because it's, it's digital. Yes. It's not real. It's fabricated. We'll dive right. into that here in a moment. And we're going to be talking about what you feel is going to happen in 2024 that every single person needs to hear. But first, such a tremendous miracle that you've just shared about in your blog that happened yeah. to you several Thanksgivings ago and how that prophetically is important for all of us today. Talk to us about that miracle healing that you saw. It was uh, one of the most unusual miracles, and the reason it came up is I did a blog on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and of course, it was th this this Sunday before Thanksgiving, and many, many years ago on that exact Sunday before Thanksgiving, I was preaching in Indiana, and I looked out and I saw a lady, she had an older lady, beautiful countenance, but I could tell she had a broken heart. Her spirit was heavy. And uh, it was the most unusual word. The Lord told me, and again, I want to give God all the glory. In fact, if I could take myself out of the story, I would, because mm. this is about Jesus. Yeah. And I couldn't see her hands, but the Lord said, this woman loves Christmas. And I thought, that what does that have to do with healing? And then he said, there are he allowed me to see an image of several boxes in an attic and they had dust on them and they were neglected. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me, these are ornaments that this woman puts up every year and she used to make them herself. And I want you to tell her that she's going to open up all those boxes, take them down out of the attic and decorate her house. And I looked at her and I said, your hands are, are arthritic. Mm. And she held them up and you could see they were gnarled and uh, swollen. I just said, God is healing your hands right now, just healing you. She began to move her fingers. And uh, you can imagine, how do you put in the words when you're watching a transformation yeah. like that? And s suddenly there was no pain and she began to cry. Then I told her about her love of Christmas, the boxes, and then her eyes got huge and she looked at me and she's yelling, yes, yes. And I said, it broke your heart that you couldn't celebrate Christmas the way you love to celebrate Christmas. And I was thinking about that and I began to weep, not, not for her. This was this last Saturday uh, before Thanksgiving. It wasn't for her that I was weeping. It was for the American Christians. COVID locked us down. The left mm. began to insult Christmas, insult Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. 
Michelle Obama literally said during the uh, COVID lockdown, she said, if anyone is around your table at Thanksgiving and they say something, and I won't say what she said, except that it's not woke, hmm. then you need to tell them to be quiet or tell someone about what they said. In other words, snitch on them. Mm -hmm. So we had to wear a mask. Our kids had to wear a mask. And then this insanity spread to where we became ashamed of Christmas, ashamed of decorating our homes, and everything got dull, which is the, the, it's the part and parcel of what woke does. It drains the life and the color and the vitality of anything that's beautiful or good. So we didn't laugh. We didn't sing Christmas carols. And like that woman with arthritis, our Christmas and Thanksgiving was in a box up mm. in the attic and we needed to open it. So I said in the blog, we need a uh, defiant Thanksgiving and a rebellious Christmas. Wow. Come on. And, and that's exactly and I, I can't believe how much that resonated with people. But that's exactly, we need to do what that woman did, is realize that we need to be healed of our being uh, bullied, ashamed, and silenced, and afraid to stand up. I said, you know what? We're not going to shoot bullets through a Bud Light can, but we need to do something. Mm. We need to get out of Chris, woke Christmas jail, mm. and we need an attitude. We need to sing Christmas carols. And, you know, people used to have around their table, they not only would laugh and share and stay out of the need to reference politics, but they, they would then play games. They would, they would, and that's why old people are so important, Alan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they remember those games. Mm -hmm. They remember what it was like before we got stupid and dull and, and just go through it, you know? It, people are going to pig out, sit on a couch, watch a football game when they have a priceless opportunity to enter into his gates with Thanksgiving. Wow. And don't get me started on Christmas because I really got to tell you uh, what an amazing opportunity to win souls Christmas is. And this year we need it more than ever. We need the nativity story to be reignited in America. And we need to defend it. We need to make it a cause. We need to get up and, and push back and get an attitude when we say Merry Christmas to someone and, uh, and not be ashamed. Yeah, because as you said, wokeism sucks the life out of everything. This is, it's our turn now. This is, this is our time to really share what the gospel has done for us, what Jesus Christ has done for us and That's who right. he is. And we will not shrink back. How many of you agree with him? We need to have a rebellious Christmas this year in the sense that we rebel against this woke culture. And I, I don't know about you, Brother Marilla. I'm, I'm getting a little frustrated or concerned, I should say, with Christians who know more about Leviathan than they do about Marx. Yeah. Uh, because that's real spiritual warfare when we're talking about yeah. Marxism in America. How do you see that? Well, it, what, what wokeism is, is it came from Marxism, mm -hmm. but it's worse than Marxism. It's worse. Because if someone were to tell me, what is the difference? You look at the Israel Hamas and uh, the, and look at Israel Hamas and look at the other things we do in this country with a double standard. One is there's one side of the argument that wants to remove and eradicate. And I know I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to say it. Why can't we negotiate with Hamas? Because you silly leftist in America, so open-minded, your brains have fallen out. Don't understand that Hamas doesn't want Israel to exist. Now, do I think there's corruption in Israeli government like any other? Yes. Have they fallen from their first love in some ways, allowing some of the social construct and moral issues that we have in America are also being repeated in Israel? Yes, Israel needs a revival. But mm -hmm. let's put that aside and not make it an Israeli Hamas argument, but the philosophical. Israel is the only nation in the Middle East that has trial by jury, does not allow child marriage, is not trying to kill 
anyone in the LGBT community. That's evident. So what the left does, Alan, is in, especially woke says, we not only want you to shut up, we want you to go away. The Christians don't want to remove anybody gay people. Mm -hmm. We don't want them even to be silenced or lose their job. We just want the freedom of speech and the freedom of worship. That's not what woke wants. That's not what Hamas wants. So how did woke and Hamas ever get together? Because they agree in a Marxist construct that says, you not only need to be silenced, you need to be removed. You need to be canceled, erased, and boundaries need to be taken away. You, there shouldn't be any border. There shouldn't be any private property. There shouldn't be any uh, rights. And, and it's absolutely essential for us to understand this. And that's why I think that they hate Christmas, because of the simplicity of the story of a baby that couldn't be stopped, hmm. that literally was absolutely the Son of God and, and the greatest hope that we have right now. It's interesting that to see the direction of your ministry over the last two years as the Lord's kind of been leading you. Um, you you've really taken a turn recently as far as your focus is not as much as it was on political matters. Right. Now there's been kind of a, a paradigm shift. What's what's caused that and where is where is your focus now? Well, what's caused it is is that I now believe sincerely that there is no political solution for the United States. You're not going to get people to not want abortion unless you can restore natural love mm. in the heart of a mother. You're not going to see deliverance from the drug epidemic until people are delivered by their addiction. So I feel what's happened is Satan has come out. Uh, the Democrats have openly endorsed Satanism. Why did mm. they do? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Because the battle has moved from the symbolic and the material into the overtly supernatural. Why is there suddenly a lot of talk about deliverance? Because people are realizing America's problem is clearly supernatural. Mm. And what's going on in our tent is the shortest and most direct route to a new America, which is to preach against woke from the pulpit, Come on. Showing the word of God and the evil of it and telling people that the power of God can transform their life. And it became evident to me that the Christian conservative movement needs a wake up call. That's why we're so divided. That's why we have the Nikki Haley and we have the, the Ram Swamy camps and all of this yeah, going yeah. on. What is needed desperately at this moment. And you're going to find Trump talking more about it. He's talking about God. He's talking about America's need for God. And this, my friend, is the shortest path to saving our nation. We are at the point where we need a moral awakening. That's how we're going to know good from evil, right from wrong. That's how we're going to empty the swamp. Because the deep state is so deeply embedded and globalists are so complicated in their layers of influence that it's going to take the power of God to break the yoke that's on America. Come on, the shortest route to breakthrough in America is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in, that's it. In, a, in a recent blog, you you kind of expounded on this scripture, and I want to I want to hear you talk a little bit about this from Proverbs twenty one twenty two, where it says, "A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold." Why has that verse specifically been highlighted to you in your spirit? I'm so glad you asked me that. See, you're the best interviewer I work with. <laughs> I got to tell you, you really are, buddy. Uh, I wish everybody would ask me these questions. <laughs> I started my last crusade. We did six tent crusades in 11 months. Think wow. about that. That's, a, that's a one, that's a tent crusade less than every two months. So now we were done and I was looking at next year. And we had struck a phenomenal victory in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. of all places. And people say, well, how'd you go to L.A.? Well, they told me not to. That's why I went. And then they said I couldn't. And so mm -hmm. I went. And they told me it was impossible. So then I said, well, now I have to go. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was directly a challenge. 
I used to believe that preachers needed to go to cities where they were invited. Then I remembered that General Patton was not invited to Germany by Hitler. Wow. Come on. And neither are we invited into the, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. God said, I'm taking you now to the major cities. You're going to go to Los Angeles. You're going to go to the, the, the Northeast and you're going to see victories in the cities that people believe are impossible. And I said, how Lord with wisdom. And it's interesting. Mm. The word that God showed us in that verse is not courage. It's not faith. It's not even love. It's wisdom. And it says by wisdom. So let's, let's look at who that man is in Proverbs 21, 22. You know who he is? He's Joshua. Mm. And Joshua is sitting there and God said, you're going to take Jericho. Well, they're doing chariot races on top of the walls of Jericho. This is the most hermetically sealed and secure city on earth. And he has not a clue, nothing that he had done before, no victory, no anything, even came close to preparing for him. And God has to bring us to a clean slate. Let me explain just real fast. Yes. Joshua didn't know what to do. And suddenly he sees a man while he's meditating and a man's holding a sword and it's God. And, he, and Joshua says, are you for us or against us? And he says, no. What an interesting mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not for you or against you. Neither one of those apply to my presence here. And then he said, I come as the commander of the army of God, meaning contextually, I'm here in a deeper purpose and a higher purpose. And God said, Mario, you're not going to take Chicago, Miami, New York City, St. Louis, New Orleans, or those cities that are like Jericho. You're not going to take them with human instruction. You got to get rid of your natural thinking. You got to get rid of your natural approach. And everyone that's watching can learn from that. The Bible says by wisdom, you can scale the walls of the mighty and take the trusted stronghold. There are areas of America that the devil believes he is unchallenged, incapable yeah. of losing, but he can lose them by people's slate being cleaned. And Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. And that is the wisdom strategies. There's a pastor watching right now. I feel this in the spirit. Come on. You're watching you don't know where the money's going to come from. You, you have a youth revival breaking out in your church. You got nowhere to put the kids. And you're wondering, what am I supposed to do? The city's fighting me. I don't have money. People are rising up against me. Some of the parents of the, the kids that are in your church don't like the drug addicts that are getting saved. They don't want them mingling with them. And I was a youth pastor. I didn't want the newly saved to mingle with the church kids either because the church kids would take their fire away. But I'll tell you what God will do. God is going to give you wisdom, sir. Wisdom. Mm. The instructions. How to take your TV network for God to the next level. How to start a school. How to answer an atheist. How to deal with 2024. How do we do it? God said, by wisdom. And that's exactly what happened. After Joshua knelt down and said, what would you have me do? What does the commander say to his servant? And the commander said, here it comes. You're going to march around the city seven times, one time a day for a week. On the seventh day, seven times around. After the seventh orbit, you're going to shout and the walls are going to come down. Those are exotic, bizarre instructions. And that's why our denominations can't help us. Bible school can't help us with this. The instructions and the strategies for turning America around are so outside of our, our, our wisdom. It's from another world. And you're going to hear the strangest things. When God told me to buy a tent, I thought, what in the world are you talking about? What does a tent have to do? We have so many arenas. We have so many theaters, so many places. And I had no idea that I was walking into something. And now look, Alan, look around. Look at everybody buying tents. Yeah. And the sad part is 
it, they're going to want the results we're getting, but they might not get them because mm -hmm. they relied on, oh, he did it that way. Right. If you're going to imitate what I've done, it's not by buying a tent. It's by doing what I did to say, God, whatever your instructions are, I'll obey them. And it may not be a tent. It'll be different. It'll be like, that can't possibly work, but it will. And it will take the valued, guarded stronghold. Amen. Wow. How many of you receive that? I mean, just write, I receive in the comments. What a powerful prophetic word for everybody watching right now. You know, for too long, we've been wise as doves and harmless as serpents. And we've got to flip the script on this. We've, we've been so focused almost entirely on national elections while the enemy is in your kindergarten class in your local school. Yeah. We have we have got to shift our focus and the shortest distance between us and victory in this nation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you think that a lot of people watching need to shift some of their focus? We do need to focus on those national things absolutely. But they need to run for school board and city council and county commission and get involved, don't you think? Yes. And I and I think that 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 really uh goes to your book again, which I really like. And, oh, and I think that, and you need to share it right now. See, I'm taking over this show right now. <laughs> this is no longer encounter. This is Mario talking here. <laughs> you take no, it. No, but, uh, but it, it, your book is for someone who's ready to say, God, I don't know how to win. Yeah. Don't know how to have victory. I don't have a clue how to fight against this enemy. And I want to know how. And, and you've chronicled it and you've done an excellent job. And I, I think that one of the, the things that I feel about it is this. Desperation is a gift from God. You see, here's, here's the truth of the matter. The reason God doesn't give you a strategy, sir, the reason God doesn't give you a plan for defeating the enemy is you have nowhere to put it. Wow. Your, your, your spiritual living room is cluttered with furniture, with trinkets, habits, ruts, traditions. And you know what cleans out your house is desperation. They talk about how a hungry writer always writes their best novel while they're starving. It's true. Hmm. And you know, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Oh, well, you know why they're going to be filled? They have a place to put it. Hmm. Desperation empties out your plans. It's a, it's a wonderful day when you fall before God and you say, I have no clue what to do now. And I'll do whatever you say. And I'm not going to hold anything back because that's a self emptying. And that's where the power, the anointing, the yoke breaking anointing and mm -hmm. the insights and strategies. You know, when Jesus said in Luke 21, he said, I'll give you a mouth and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to gainsay nor resist. And, and what it, what did that, what was in that? The same principle. He said, mark it down. Do not prepare beforehand what you will speak for I will give you a mouth. So what it, was it? They emptied their own speech, emptied their own ideas, emptied their own values and made a place for that irresistible tongue to be put in them. Wow. That's really what this is about today. This is the most important message for this hour. Absolutely. I want to know how many of our Encounter Today family will say, I am going to apply that. You need to go back and listen to what he's just said several times over and over again. And I want you to tell me in the comments, I'm going to be looking. Yes, I'm going to apply this to my life. Now, Brother Mara, I want to ask you about 2024. First, thank you for mentioning my book. Thank you for writing the forward to that book. Yeah. And, and I think your forward is worth the price of the book. I'll tell you what we'll do for all of you watching, because it'd be great for Christmas as well. We'll make it a special offer. If you check out special offers at EncounterToday.com, you can get that book for a gift of any size, just so we can wow. get it into your hands. So go to wow. EncounterToday.com and check that out. Check that out. And uh, we want to get that resource in your hands. Arm for victory. Seven Arm weapons you need. Arm for victory. Seven weapons you need to advance in 2024. I think it's a preparation manual for the coming year, but you've specifically gotten a word on what's going to happen in 2024. I think this is the most important word that we can receive right now 
So talk to us about this. What's, what do you see? What's going to happen? Well, the Holy Spirit said to me not to look for predictions, not to look for prophetic words, but to make it happen. And I thought, Lord, what is those three words? Make it happen. What does that mean? You know, if you look hmm. at this, Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 1, then the Pharisees and Sadducees came testing him and asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather. The sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites. You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of mm -hmm. the times. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's do this. When you seek a prophetic word, are you denying the obvious? Are you denying the obvious? Say, well, Mara, I need a word of encouragement. What, when you read the Bible, it told you why you were discouraged, hmm. but you wanted an exotic. It, it, it isn't even that I want to hear from God. It's that I want to hear from God in an exotic way. I'd like it to have some mysticism to it in a, a hot flash or a cold chill. The solid Bible, the word of God already tells you. Now, without a prophet, I can tell you what's going to happen in 2024. I don't believe Joe Biden is going to run for reelection. Mm. I don't believe it. Well, Mario, did you get a prophetic word that Joe Biden isn't going to run? No. The clues are everywhere, just like signs in the sky. I see. There is an obviousness to next year. So what do we do? We got to make it happen. I want to read another verse. First Samuel 10, then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Mm -hmm. And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands for God is with you. I'm going to tell you an interesting thing about guidance, uh, Alan. We think I need to hear from God. I need guidance. Sometimes guidance is obvious. Sometimes you're even going to get anger from God when you ask his opinion like Balaam did on something he already told you not to do. Wow. So like, for example, in Acts 16, they tried to go to Mysia and they couldn't. They tried to go to Bithynia and they couldn't. They tried to go to Arabia and they couldn't. And so laying down that night, Paul received a vision of the massive man of Macedonia and saying, come over and help us. Guidance came because he was already in motion. Hmm. Right now, everyone watching should not be listening to prophetic voices that are predicting 2024. You should be on your face, reading the word of God, looking at what's the signs in the sky and say, what am I going to do for God in 2024? This is not about wow. me fearing, me needing to understand where do I put my money? What do I do? No, I'm a child of God. God show me how I'm going to attack evil. And I've made up my mind. And here is the interesting part in verse seven. It says, and let it be when these signs come to you. And there they are that you do as the occasion demands. Now in Psalm 119 verse 126, the psalmist said something interesting. It's time for you to work, O oh God. Now you take the modern charismatic. When are they going to tell me it's time for God to work? Well, I got a word, or I felt it, or I know, and I'm sensing that God is telling me it's time for him to work. The psalmist said this, it is time for you to work because they've set aside your word and made it null and void. The way yes. we know God wants to work is that drag queens are reading to our children. Wow. The way we know God wants to work is that our manipulation and, and the wokeness and the evil that's all around us is declaring it to us. And he said, what does the occasion demand? There's a pastor watching. He's saying, I need God to show me what I should be preaching on. And you know what? He's not talking to you because he's saying, listen, you. If you can't realize that you ought to be in your pulpit opposing evil and telling your people to pray and repent and get right with God, I'm not going to talk to you because you've already violated truth. 
in your current context. You're already violating truth. Why would I tell you something? All it's going to do is reinforce your need for an intuitive, mystical, twilight zone experience instead of the solid rock teaching of Christ, which will take you to the obvious action that this moment we're in. 2024 is screaming at us, Alan. Mm. It's telling us what we need to do. It's telling us we need to be strong. We need to secure our marriages and our family. We need to plan ways of winning the loss. We need to articulate and equip ourselves with knowledge and information to take to a school board meeting, to run for office, to pressure those who are evil that are influencing our culture by being that voice of God. So instead of hoping it'll happen, getting a prophetic word that it will happen, make it happen. Three words. Type it in the comments. Make it happen. This is what's going to happen in 2024, what you make happen. And I know that requires a little more responsibility, but it's always required more responsibility. It's not as entertaining, but it is more prophetic because we have a more sure word of prophecy found in that book. And when you start applying that, I'm telling you, you're going to see, you're going to see everything that the Bible predicted come to pass right. exactly as it is promised as you apply it in your life. You know, there's, it, it's interesting. Jesus predicted in the last days there'll be people who come to him and say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Which seems to indicate that there'll be a fascination that there will be folks who are focused on prophecy, folks who are focused on spiritual warfare, so much so they miss the entire boat. They miss the entire ship. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, what you've just given us a real warning against the co- the irresponsibleness of the church at this moment. Hmm. Very uh, flippant, very irreverent, and incapable of understanding. This is not a game, and there are stakes that are much higher than we realize. Time is not on our side. Our ability to waffle and vacillate. You see, we're assuming we have a luxury that we don't have. And the luxury we have is this. We can play parlor tricks at church. We can follow a ministry and, and act like we're going down the yellow brick road of, of words and understanding and experiences, not realizing that we need to stand our ground and be in our assignment. And that's really what made Joshua know you're not going to lose. You're not going to be without power because you're operating within your assignment. And that's what everyone that watching needs to know. And there's so much that is then released so much light because you know, this is my assignment. Paul was told once to go to the Gentiles and he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. That's the key. That's the key right now. There's grace in your assignment. And there is so much going on. It's not to discount prophetic words that are given, but when you need that, when you're fixated on that, those prophetic words should simply be a support system, an encouragement, something that confirms the word of God that you have had in your personal life from reading the word of God. And I want to talk to you, Brother Mario, about some of the struggles that are coming, especially and the prophetic significance of the release of the J6 footage. The new Speaker of the House has just released all that footage. We're going to talk about that over on the premium side at EncounterToday.com. Those of you who are watching, that's an uncensored part of the interview. We're going to talk, we're going to dive into some very controversial things. You have to go to EncounterToday.com and become a premium member. First month is a dollar. We're not trying to get anything from you. We're just trying to weed out the censorship and get real passionate believers together in a room to have real discipleship and real uh, in-depth conversations. So check out EncounterToday.com. Check out the premium membership. But before we do that, Brother Morello, we need to equip believers yeah, we do. for these end times. Listen to me, every single one of you watching. You need to get resources in your hands for you to read, resources for you to listen to and to watch. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You have to be able to read it, watch it, and listen to it. And so I asked Brother Morello to come on and to discuss his resources because if there's one thing that has built me up over the years, and I'm talking about decades, not to give away his age or mine. It's been his writings, his books, his teachings. So, Brother Murillo, you've put together something that I think is truly phenomenal, and I and I was kind of chastising you a little bit for making it <laughs> so cheap. 
Um, but you're not listening to me anyway. You're gonna you're doing you're doing it anyway. What is this Christmas treasure box that you've put together for people? Well, the Christmas treasure box, first of all, it, the box itself is a keepsake. You'll find that out. Secondly, in it are three books. The first is Vessels of Fire and Glory. The second is Do Not Leave Quietly. And the third is It's Our Turn Now. Mm -hmm. And when these books follow like a sequel, one for the other. And uh, I am shocked at how these books have been received. Uh, Vessels of Fire and Glory just started something in the body of Christ. It actually changed the conversation in a lot of circles. And people were drawn to an intimacy with God. Yes. Then, do not leave quietly. It's like it turned spectators into soldiers and audiences in the armies hmm. to fight against what was going on and take a stand. And it's our turn now proves that the massive harvest is here. So these books will equip. And normally, uh, they have, so we have those three books. And then we have a flash drive. Now, this is what I'm excited about. So dive yeah. into what's on. You've got two flash drives, but let's yes. talk about those. The first flash drive takes the opening night of all six of our last crusades. And it demonstrates to you what God is doing and saying. And you'll see thousands of people get saved. A lot of people have never seen what it's like in a single altar call mm -hmm. for 800 to 1,000 people to be born again. And, you know, some of our critics say, well, a lot of those were rededication. You're wrong. You're wrong. These were drug addicts and gangsters, mm. atheists, devil worshipers. And and uh, I'm telling you, it, it's an amazing video to see. Well, you have six of them on one flash drive. And normally that's a $25 item just by itself. Mm -hmm. But while supplies, I love it when they say <laughs> that in a commercial. But wait, there's more. Well, Wait, there's more. And while supplies last, we're including a hand-picked library called the Treasury. Yeah. It's got 18 of my audio sermons on it and several of the books that are out of print. Uh, we have Critical Mass. I'm the Christian the Devil Warned You my About. My favorite. Fresh Fire and, <laughs> and Edgewise. Those four books plus... Whew, <laughs> There's five videos. One of the videos will show you the cow palace where we had 16,000 people. The other is taken at the Jesus culture encounter in Reading where the shout of God fell while I was preaching. And if, if, even though I, I just stand by what I preached, let me tell you when that shout came in. So anyway, you you can get that as a bonus if you order it now at sixty five dollars, and all you got to do is go to mariomarillo dot org and order it right now. Yeah, that is the Christmas treasure box, and we'll put a link in the description. Why wouldn't you get this? Is a library of content for you to watch, listen to, and read in preparation for this year. We're going to need it, brother. Brother, thank you for putting this together. Well, listen, and if you're going to put a link in there, I'll tell you, rather than saying mariomarillo.org, I'll, I'll send you the link that'll take you right to the, this, the order form itself. Perfect. I'll That's get, what we'll do. I'll so it'll be that. one easy click. Yes, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, go do that right now and then head on over to EncounterToday.com because I have some very controversial questions to ask Brother Murillo <laughs> about the insurrection that took place and the new footage. All the footage is being released, and uh, he's taking a look at some of this stuff, as have I. We'll show you some of that footage. We're going to talk about it together. Again, EncounterToday.com on the premium membership side. Again, the first month, it's a dollar. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Brother Murillo, you ready to go over there? I'm ready to go over there. Well, thanks for joining us, man. We really appreciate you and your ministry. Well, as I said, brother, you're the best, and I enjoy <laughs> this as much as anything. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. Well, we'll head on over there. We'll start on that uncensored conversation. Let us know where you're watching from in the comments, and we'll see you on the premium side. God bless.